Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC guy. Today, I want to talk a little bit about Keep Alives. Devices like this one that I showed how to make in a video uh, here on YouTube about a year ago. Uh, I've included a link right above here to that video. Hopefully it'll show up. This is the first time I've tried it, so um, bear with me. And I'll also include a link to this video at the uh, end in the in-screen section um, where you can uh, click and, and go view it too. Now, I got a lot of comments and questions after that last video from people uh, who wanted to make their own, obviously. And I heard from a lot of people who have made these and uh, successfully without any problems. The main problem came, though, when they were buying the individual components, all the little capacitors and resistors and diodes and things. Um, occasionally, they ran into problems finding the right size uh, or, the, or the, the right device. So what I want to do today is go back and take a look at the design for these and give you a few hints on what to look for when you're putting together uh, a selection of components to build your own uh, devices. Um, these are fairly easy to find at mauser.com. Everything I've, I've used, I bought from them in the past. I've also bought stuff from all electronics, some of the things like the resistors and the diodes. Uh, and the Xeniers can be purchased there. Supercapacitors, I'm not so sure. They're a little bit uh, finicky and different uh, to deal with. So I, I, I really recommend getting the Mauser. Before we take a look at the schematic and we go over the design though, I want to remind you about the subscribe button here on the side. Go ahead and click that. Uh, if you're working on a mobile device, you might have to wait until we get to the end screen section where there'll be a picture of me over here on the right. You can click on that and get a uh, subscribe link as well. I also want to point out, click on the little bell that's next to subscribe when you do that. The, the bell allows you to set the notification level. And there's three different types of, of notification, all, none, or uh, a special uh, uh, algorithm designed just for you. I suggest the all because that way you'll be notified every time I post a video on this uh, channel. Um, so let's go ahead. I'm going to get up a schematic and we'll go ahead and start taking a look at the design of these Keep Alive devices and how you can substitute components when you're putting together a package for your uh, Keep Alives. Okay, this is a schematic uh, showing the various components that are part of these uh, Keep Alives that I show how, showed how to build in my video uh, back in um, 2018. So let's take a look at how each works and I'll uh, give you some tips along the way about what to think about when you're replacing some of these components for a larger scale or for a different device. Okay, so first, let's take a look at how they work, okay? We have the negative end here. That's connected to a, a, a ground or a negative connection on the decoder. Some decoders, it's, it's actually provided uh, as, the, uh, black wire, as a black wire or a black with white stripes. Um, the positive wire to complete the circuit is your blue wire or the common connection for your functions on the decoder. So I'll show you that in a little bit more detail for various decoders uh, in the next video. So these devices, we have shown here five capacitors in a line, in a series. Each one rated at three volts, so that's 15 volts total between them. That does add. It is additive for these. The farad rating, and that's a measure of the capacitance or the ability of these devices each to store electrons, um, is one farad, so we've got a three volt, one farad supercapacitor. Supercapacitors are a special type that can store a lot of electrons and release it quickly. And you want to be able to release that stored electricity quickly to go back out and power your locomotive. So for now, three volts, one farad is what I'm talking about. You can also find these in two and a half, 2.7 volts, and various others. But for, for now, I'm going to look at a 15 volt string of supercapacitors. 
Okay? Now, electrons move through these capacitors, and a certain amount is stored in them. Now, it then proceeds through this resistor here. Why is there a resistor? Well, there's something called inrush current. When a, capa when a power is first turned on to the track, these guys are going to try to charge up as fast as they can. And your DCC system and your circuit breakers on your layout, if you have them, can interpret this sudden inrush current, and that's what it's called technically, uh, as a short circuit, and they can shut down on you. To avoid that, this resistor here will slow down the process initially so that these devices go ahead and charge up, but they don't look like a short circuit to your DCC system. So everything will keep moving along. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the diodes. First, there's a standard silicone diode. It's a 1N4001. It's rated at 1 amp. Most of you are not going to be using 1 amp at all for your motors and your decoders operation. So this is perfectly adequate for N and HO scale locomotives. If you start moving up in larger scales, then you might want to kick this up to an amp and a half or two amps, whatever. Same thing for this resistor. We're here running, oh, one watt. Uh, you might kick that up on the wattage as well, just to be safe. Over here, zinnia diode. A zinnia diode works similarly to a normal diode. Okay, Electricity, electrons coming through this path cannot proceed because it will be blocked by the zinnia diode or by this, if you're going this way, by this diode. So it's forced to flow through this path here. It can't go this way and bypass things. Now, if you have a power outage due to dirty track or, or a dead frog, then the path can be this way. Okay, So it bypasses this resistor and you get the full voltage out of the supercapacitors. Okay. That's what this diode does. It's a blocking diode. It allows current to flow this way or forces to flow this way and then can allow it to flow this way when you want it to discharge. So what does this one do? Well, under normal conditions, this one works just like this one. It prevents electrons from flowing through here, forces them to go through this path, which is the path you want. You want to charge your supercapacitors. Okay? Now, the great thing about this is, though, once the voltage gets above 15 volts, okay, which is greater than what your supercapacitors can take, this kicks in and it allows electrons to flow through it. Okay? Now, that's important because it acts as a voltage regulator, and it prevents the voltage going through these supercapacitors to exceed 15 volts. That is very important in preventing these guys from going poof, because if they overcharge due to a higher voltage, they will pop on you, and you don't want that to happen. Now, for the most part, I wasn't at all concerned with these being the same rating, 15 volts and 15 volts. Why? Because most DCC systems are going to be putting out less than 15 volts. Digitrex boosters and command stations that have boosters in them come set at about 14 volts. Plus, once your electricity goes, or the electrons, goes through the decoder and gets to the capacitors, it's going to be down to about 13 and a half volts, simply because of um, a certain amount of current is used within the decoder circuit itself, okay, converting the DCC to DC. So in reality, most DC systems, DCC systems, the power on the track is going to be somewhere around 14 or less. And what gets to these capacitors is going to be maybe 13, 13 and a half. So this will never work under most conditions. Another factor here is, if you look at the data sheet on Mauser, you will find that this value here is probably plus or minus 5 to 10 percent. So let's assume 10 percent. That's 1.5 volts. Now this could work then anywhere from about 13 and a half to 16 and a half volts. So, this could turn on at 13 and a half volts. Again, it's probably not going to be doing anything in most 
scenarios with most command stations and boosters. The power on the track is not going to be that large. Um, therefore, I now recommend that if you've got a 15 volt series here, drop this down to about 13 and a half volts. And that way you've got that cushion uh, that allows you to uh, exceed the rated voltage. So it might be a 13 volt uh, Zinnier diode, but it might not turn on until 14 and a half volts in, in reality, or it might turn on at a lower one. So when you're designing these, I would say if it's 15 volts, go with a 13 volt Zinnier diode. If you're working at 12 volts, if you've got uh, five of, uh, four of these, you'd be a 12 volt string, then I would uh, drop that down to 10 volts and so on. So that you've got that extra cushion to account for that plus or minus 10% in the worst case scenario for these components. The other thing that happens here is when this starts conducting, I said that this stays at uh, the working voltage, so it'd be 15 volts. Let's say you've got 16 volts going through here. That extra current is going to go through here and it's going to be dissipated as heat by this resistor. That's why that one watt is very important, to have enough capacity to dissipate the heat without burning up. And that's why at a higher voltage, like 18 volts, you might want to kick this up to a, a higher wattage to be able to take that extra heat. So, and the same thing, if you're running uh, our locomotives that are pulling at a higher amperage than one amp, you might want to boost this diode up to a higher amperage uh, unit so it can take that when it's called into use. Because these guys, they are not going to charge to any higher value than what they see. If you're putting 12 volts through them, they're not going to go up to 13 or 14 volts. They will only have 12 volts stored in them. Okay, So that's another thing to think about. That's why uh, it doesn't really matter to have a 15 volt string if you're only going to have 12 volts on the track because they're not going to go up higher than 12 volts. That's all I have to say. I'm sure you guys are going to have uh, questions and comments about this, so please, that's what the comments field is for. Uh, again, if you can't access the comments field on your computer, please uh, go over to my website at www.dccguy.com and when you get there, uh, there's a contact uh, form there that you can fill out send me an email, or you can add uh, your discussion or comments to the uh, comment field uh, for this video uh, link that I'm posting there as well. So there's two ways at least for you to, to get, in, or three ways to get in contact with me uh, if you have comments or questions about this. In the next video that I'm going to do on, on Stay Alives, uh, I'm going to show you how you can figure out how to attach these devices to decoders that you already may own. So stick around and uh, keep looking. Hit that notification button again, and you'll know when I publish the next video on Keep Alives or Stay Alives and how to connect them to your decoders. Until then, keep on watching.